In a Swedish city just inside the Arctic Circle, a historic church is on the move. And we don't just mean a congregation, we mean the entire structure. It's being relocated three miles away from where it was built in 1912. The reason is because the ground beneath it has become unstable. This is a mining town. It has been for decades. The mine's operator is the largest employer in the community and the company is paying the estimated $1 billion cost of moving the 670-ton church. Along with its massive pipe organ, the structure will still serve the city that built it, but it's a bittersweet occasion for the townspeople who grew up with the landmark at its original site. Reuters News reports that thousands of people and numerous other buildings are being relocated here. The mining has produced most of Europe's iron ore, and the company hopes to expand its operations to obtain the rare earth elements used in smartphones and alternative forms of energy. But continued operations have left many buildings on weaker ground and resulted in the need for a new town center on more stable earth. So the city is literally on the move. Does the use of artificial intelligence come at the cost of using real intelligence? That question factors into our next subject on the world from A to Z. I'm Carl Azus. Welcome to the show. A recent study out of MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, assigned a series of SAT essays to dozens of people between ages 18 and 39. One group used ChatGPT, an artificial intelligence chatbot, to help write them. One group used a search engine to gather info for the essays. One used no computer tools at all. Researchers looked at participants' brain activity during the study. It found that the brains of those who used ChatGPT, quote, consistently underperformed at neural, linguistic, and behavioral levels. Brain activity was moderate for the search engine group. It was strongest for those who didn't use AI. The findings raised questions about AI's potential impact on learning and how it should be used in education, as the paper's author says developing brains, like those of students, are at a higher risk. The sample size was limited, 54 people, all from around Boston, Massachusetts. The study has not been peer-reviewed yet by other researchers to independently assess its quality, and some critics didn't like the way it was carried out. One compared AI to a calculator that, if used properly, could enhance learning instead of detract from it. As far as the essays themselves, two English teachers who reviewed the ChatGPT group's work said it lacked originality and was, quote, soulless. The findings come at a time when little is known about the effects of AI on our brains and when many people are increasingly relying on it to assist in tasks and save time. In a fast-paced world, sometimes distractions can slow us down and impact our daily lives. Job performance suffers, um, school performance suffers, relationships could suffer as well. Psychiatrist Dr. Avita Singh with The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center says there are many causes of short attention spans, but four of the biggest contributors are stress, anxiety, lack of sleep, and digital devices. To help yourself focus, Singh says to remember the acronym TAKE5. T stands for take frequent breaks, step away from a computer, go for a short walk. She says this time away can help your mind reset. A is for actively engaging in the task at hand. If you're trying to focus on one thing and can't, it may be time for a short break. K is for keeping distractions at a minimum. That may mean putting your devices away, committing to not looking at social media, or letting coworkers know it's not a good time to talk. E stands for eliminating multitasking. Instead, put all your focus on completing one task. Finally, five is for five minutes. That's about how long you may need to take a break to refocus. Taking the time to uh, think about these tips and um, figuring out how they work for your day-to-day -day life can be really helpful in at least starting to improve attention span, improve focus even a little bit, which can help day-to-day -day life a lot. I'm Mandy Gaither. Ah, world of knowledge. Under what U.S. president did Hawaii become America's 50th state? Herbert Hoover, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson.
Hawaii's official admission to the Union took place on this date in 1959 with a proclamation by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. On this date in world history! August 21st, 1831 was when a black American slave named Nat Turner led a violent rebellion in Virginia. In the days that followed, dozens of whites and blacks were killed. The Virginia State Militia got involved and eventually helped stop the rebellion. Today, Turner's legacy continues to be fiercely debated, with some supporting the actions he took and others opposing them. The first of the Lincoln-Douglas debates took place in Illinois on this date in 1858. The candidates spoke before a crowd of more than 10,000 people who had nowhere to sit. In all, there were seven debates between the two men. And on this date in 1911, the Mona Lisa was stolen from the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. The theft helped give the work its worldwide fame. It was taken by an Italian man who'd worked at the Louvre and wanted to bring the portrait back to Italy where it was painted. The thief served just over a year in prison after the Mona Lisa was recovered in 1913. Where in the world? This is an East African Republic that gained its independence from Britain in 1963. The colors of its flag are black, red, green, and white. It's located between Ethiopia and Tanzania, and its capital is Nairobi. This is Kenya, a nation of more than 58 million people. Just a couple guys headed out to fish on a lake in Kenya, but these days the water is pretty hard to get around on as it's covered in a green carpet of water hyacinths. The plant is also making it hard for fishermen to get any bites because the plant's rapid growth has decreased the lake's population of fish. Long ago, before the water hyacinth invaded, we used to get a good amount of fish because the breeding zones had not been affected by water hyacinth. When the water hyacinth affected the breeding zones, the fish decreased. The pesky plant has cost the country's fishing industry between an estimated $150 and $350 million and it's resulted in heavy personal losses for people who rely on fishing for a living. Since water hyacinth started growing in Lake Nyavasha, we have tried getting a solution from the government, but it was not possible. So a small startup company, Hyapak, offered its own solution. It pays fishermen to collect water hyacinths to make a biodegradable packaging material. We harvest water hyacinth, dry it, and sell it to them. Hyapak chops the plants up finely into a sort of crumbly powder and adds that to a mix of chemicals it calls proprietary additives. This then is turned into a goo. This goo is then placed in square containers to dry, and once it has dried, what's left is a nice sheet of biodegradable paper. Hyapak is targeting its product to the agricultural sector. It aims to make the sheets into bags for seeds that could be buried in the ground, hoping to eliminate the need for plastic seed bags. What we're trying to look at is how do we use one problem, which is water hyacinth, to the other problem, which is plastic waste pollution. Three of the states we haven't mentioned yet include Kansas, Georgia, and Colorado, and the first of those, the Sunflower State, is where we see Miss Alexander's class is with us. Satanta Junior Senior High School is where the Indians are watching in Satanta. To the Peach State, want to give a big hello to Coach Martin's class, Hardaway High School is the home of the Hawks in Columbus. And Mrs. Teljohn's class rounds things out for us today. The Firebirds are watching from Falcon Middle School. It's in the Centennial State community of Peyton. Before we saddle up and ride off into the sunset, we rounded up a real life roadside rodeo for you that recently took place in the Prairie State of Illinois. First, the getaway. When its trailer was stopped at a gas station, well, this happened. As the animal approached the interstate, police got in touch with local cattlemen to corral the cow the cowboy way. And they said with a little teamwork and a well-placed lasso, the cow was captured. When it's time to get Bear back to basics, just rope in a couple cowboys to come barreling in and grab the bull by the horns. They're last so efficient in fencing in livestock that's running all roady over the place, and you'd better believe they won't steer you wrong when a little doggy gets a long way away. I'm Carl Azus, and I'm hoping to spur you on to watch the world from A to Z on Friday. See y'all then.